friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a cataract with jonular dehiscence from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock so four clock hours of jonular tear the patient has history of trauma the patient is 56 years old male i have taken up this case for surgery let us see the surgical steps by this time the main incision has been made and this is a side port on the left side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away and now air bubble is injected to fill up the anterior chamber underneath this air bubble tripan blue 0.06 percent dye is applied over the anterior capsule uh, so if we place the dye underneath air bubble the staining is quick and staining is much better and the dye doesn't touch the corneal endothelium the dye is washed out and we can see uniform staining of the anterior capsule and now the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and then a 26 gauze bent needle is taken a cystitome is taken the anterior capsule is incised from uh, on a clock to the center this capsule tag is sealed with a ureta forceps and a capsular rexis is done i aim for a small rexis because there is genular defect from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock but uh, from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock i go little periphery so that the size of the rexis becomes optimum so bit eccentric rexis and now hydro dissection is not done hydro free dissection that means the separation of capsule from the cortex is done with a spatula why because if we do hydro dissection the cortical matter will come out of the capsular bag visibility will be poor my plan is to do hydro free dissection that means hydro and that means separation of the capsule from the cortex make a space for introduction of ctr the cortex the lens matter doesn't come out of the capsular bag but a space is created for placement of the ctr since the defect is 4 o'clock hours quite a bit i'm planning to place the ctr now itself at after separating the capsule from the underlying cortex the ctr is taken now this is a macpherson's forceps in my right hand and a another forceps in my left hand and the ctr has gone in the capsular bag the leading hap, leading end has gone into the equator the gradually the ctr is advanced and now with the help of a sinski hook the ctr is placed in the capsular bag now i inject visco again and now i am planning to divide this nucleus this is hydro dissection now now i am planning to divide this nucleus with a pre chopper without using uh, irrigation so 
So, what happens? There is no fluid going into the vitreous through the defect. The vitreous is not hydrated and the lens is divided very nicely into four parts. This is Dr. Sohail's pre chopper. Now, the fecal needle is introduced with its bevel down. Uh, immediately, I start aspiration so that no fluid goes into the vitreous. very uh, the whole bag though the see unless there was CTR at this time the whole the genular tear would have extended and it would have been much more difficult. After eating up on piece the there is space created and the other pieces move much more easily and one by one the pieces are being emulsified. Ultrasonic energy is set at 60 percent, flow rate is set at 35 ml per minute and vacuum is 350 millimeter of mercury in this case and bottle height is 80 centimeter. Uh, this is the last nuclear piece. The poster capsule is far behind, the antechamber is very stable, and I emulsify the last nuclear piece. And now, when I come out, my plan is to form the antechamber with visco and then come out. So, I take the visco in my left hand and I ask my assistant to push the visco. As visco starts coming out, I stop irrigation. Let me repeat, as visco starts coming out, irrigation is stopped so that there is not much pressure in the anterior chamber. If there are, it is too much pressure, the irrigation, irrigating fluid may go through the defect in the vitreous cavity and the vitreous may be hydrated. And now my plan is to remove the cortex from the upper part first from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So, I make a side port at 7 o'clock introduce the 23 gauze simco through this and easily remove the cortex from the upper part. Since the hydro free dissection was done, the cortex came out easily, but we will have some difficulty when cleaning the cortex in the lower part. Let us see what happens. See. As I pull the cortex, the CTR tends to come out of the bag. So, we have to make side to side movements and even then I find that it is becoming dangerous and I just, yes, one, one piece, one speck of cortex has come out. And now, a lot of cortex is still there from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Inject some visco and now I use the Simco through the main incision. And here, see how it comes.
this is this cortex is comes along the it pulls the CTR inwards and then comes out. Anyway, the cortex has been nicely cleaned, the bag is central and the we are ready to implant an intraocular lens. Since rest of the genule is strong, we can place a lens in the bag. Uh, no need to place the lens in the sulcus and do optic capture in such cases. Okay, there is some, yes, there is a small bit of cortex at, yes, this one, small bit of cortex at 7 o'clock and it has come out. So, again the bag is filled up with visco, this is 2 percent, 2 percent hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. The wound is enlarged little bit, the wound that was 2.8 now 2.9 or 3 millimeter and this is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens. Here the trick is the trailing haptic should be placed beyond and it should go in the bag at on shot. We must not dial it and place it in the bag. Dialing a lens may cause some more uh, stress on the jonule and some more jonular fibers may get torn. The lens is nicely centered and now the visco that has been used to implant the lens is to be nicely cleaned. This is irrigation with Simco. Yes, it is done. And now I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration cannoli. Irrigation goes through the main wound and aspiration through the left side port. A nice cleaning of visco has been done. And now I take the irrigation in my left hand, push the lens towards 7 o'clock and place the irrigating probe behind the lens so that visco from behind the lens is nicely cleaned. And aspiration is from the 7 o'clock side port now. The lens is nicely centered. We have some post-op pictures, we are going to see that after conclusion of the surgery. Post-op pictures after 7 days. This is moxifloxacin and then this is closure of the side ports by hydration. At this time, I have injected air to f maintain the depth of the anterior chamber. This is the final lavage, the anterior chamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded. After checking the integrity of the wounds, there should not be any leakage from any side. Now, this is 
the post op pictures, the cornea is absolutely clear. Anti chamber is quiet, intraocular pressure is 14 millimeter of mercury, unaided vision is 6 by 12. The patient is very happy, and the surgeon is also very happy. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.